Hello and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be taking a look at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com under the topic of Newton's Laws titled Solve It with Newton's Second Law. So first of all, we, we've done Newton's Second Law in some previous videos. I'll link one here uh, if you want to get some more information about that. But remember, the force here that causes a certain amount of mass to accelerate is always the net force. So it's the total amount of force on the object. And that's going to be crucial for today's uh, work that we do. This force is the total amount of force, and that's going to cause it to accelerate at a certain rate. We're going to go through an apprentice level problem, a master level problem, and a wizard level problem. There are two apprentice, three uh, master, and I forget how many wizard uh, level problems. But once you got one, then sometimes you have to work from a different direction, but it'll all use the same equations. So give you a good chance to show that you understand it. All right, so this, this one says a frictional force of 200 newtons acts upon a 34 kilogram rightward moving box to accelerate it leftwards. In other words, slow it down. Okay, so something moving rightward and accelerating leftward is slowing down. Uh, also, friction can only cause things to slow down, uh, at least relative to the surface it's in contact with. Okay, so let's first start by filling out what we've got. It says a frictional force of 200. So the frictional force is 200 newtons. Just as a side note, um, you have to use the keyboard entry on screen. If you have a touch screen, it's a lot easier to use the touch screen and just touch the numbers. Otherwise, you have to you move your mouse around and click on them, which isn't too much of a hassle. But don't forget, you've got a touch screen if you do have a touch screen. Um, acts upon a 34 kilogram. Kilograms is a unit of mass. So 34 would go down here. All right. Well, we know we can get the force of gravity because the force of gravity is the weight, and we know that is the mass times the acceleration caused by gravity. I'm not going to show all my work here because we're doing several different equations, and I would run out of room. Um, but we plug in for m, the 34. We plug in for g, 9.8. And you may not use 10. It does not... Um, allow it, I mean, you can use 10, but you'll get it wrong. So it does count that as being wrong. So be sure you've got a calculator handy as you're doing this. You get uh, 333.2 Newtons. Okay. And then because this is moving along a horizontal surface, we know it's not going to be accelerating up or down um, because uh, it's, and therefore, because it's not accelerating up or down, we know that the upward force must balance out the downward force. So remember this bottom force down here, that's how hard gravity is pulling on the box. Normal force, excuse me, normal force is how hard the box and the surface are squeezed together. The force from the squeeze together of the box and the surface pushes upwards on the box, downwards on the surface, and that gives you your normal force. So then uh, these two forces up here cancel out. This is our only force, which means it is the only force that's left. The other two canceled out, which means it is, that should be a 200. I wrote so sloppy, I couldn't even read my own writing. So 200, 200 newtons is the net force. Once again, because the upward and downward forces canceled out. So the leftover force was the 200 to the left. So then we just use F equals MA, okay? But we're solving for A in this case. So that means we have to get rid of the M. So we divide like that, A equals F over M, okay? A equals F over M. So we take the F, the 200, divide by the M, the 34, and we get, I'm using my calculator as we go to, 200, Got to clear my calculator. 200 divided by 34 gives us 5.88 meters per second squared or meters per second per second, as you see they use in this concept builder. The other problem in the apprentice level has you solve, uh, gives you the acceleration and you end up solving for the other things. It does not give you the frictional force. Uh, I didn't think we needed to do that, first of all, because you could just work backwards and just use these same equations that we used here uh, and just in the other order. But also on the master level, I chose one where 
we are given the acceleration. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. First of all, you can see that there are two horizontal forces. You can see that's why we're stepping up to the master level. Okay, so we see a rightward force of 500 newtons applied to a 25 kilogram object to accelerate it to the right at four meters per second. So it's a rightward moving thing being pushed rightward. We can see that this force is bigger and so it's gonna get faster. All right. So let's go ahead and put in the things that we know. We know a rightward force of 500 newtons. Well, the rightward force is the applied force. That means somebody is pushing this with 500 newtons to 25 kilograms. Kilograms is a measurement of mass. So mass is 25 kilograms. And accelerate it at 4 meters per second per second. 4 meters per second per second. Meters per second per second is a unit of acceleration. It also says accelerate it at that, at that. So now we can use F equals MA. You can see as soon as you get two of the three things at the bottom down here, as soon as you got two, just use F equals MA to get the other. In this case, it's already arranged nicely for us. We're doing M, which is 25, times A, which is 4, which gives us a very nice... 100. Okay. Uh, we can also use the mass to get the weight or the force of gravity. Remember, we have to use 9.8. So the mass is 25. We multiply that times 9.8. And we see that the gravity is 245 newtons. Remember, because this is moving along a horizontal surface, if uh, gravity is 245, that means that the box and the surface are being squeezed together with 495, which means the surface is pushing up on our box with 245 newtons. And finally, we have to use the fact that the net force is 100, and we know that this is 500 to the right. Well, how do we get a net force of 100 to the right? We'd have to have 400 to the left because 500 is 100 more than 400. So a net force means that we're gonna have 100 extra. We know it's accelerating to the right. So we know that the 500 has to be the bigger number. That means this one had to be 100 less. All right, once again, you'll have to solve from some different directions. Uh, one of them gives you, instead of the rightward force, it gives you the force of friction. But it, as long as you got one of these two and you know how much different they are from each other. And you know that this one's bigger because the right word is uh, the direction of the acceleration. Then you could solve any one of those three. All right, moving on. Before we actually move on to the wizard level, uh, let's talk about friction. So uh, for the wizard level, you're going to need to know another equation related to friction. But before we do that, I want to talk about what friction is. Friction is affected by two things. Uh, we already know that friction is two surfaces rubbing against each other, and it's the force that's preventing them from rubbing past each other. But two things affect that. The first one is how bumpy the surfaces are. If you've got two pieces of sandpaper, they're really going to have trouble bumping past each other. There's a value for that that is called the coefficient of friction, and it uses this Greek letter mu, which looks kind of like a u, a lowercase u, with a little tail in front of it. The second thing that affects friction is how hard these off objects are squeezed together. If you have two pieces of sandpaper barely touching, it's not hard to move them past each other. But if you put a piece of sandpaper on the floor face up and then put one underneath like a filing cabinet face down, that's going to make it very hard to sl slide that filing cabinet because the two surfaces are so rough and they're pushed together so hard. Let's take a look at the microscopic view of what's going on. So what we've zoomed into this little part underneath this crate where the crate is in contact with this surface, whatever that is. When we zoom in with a microscope, we can see that any surface has little bumps. Even the smoothest surface will have little bumps for each atom. Okay, so every surface will have some bumps. As you try and drag this across here, depending on which way you're trying to drag, it looks like we're trying to drag this to the left here. As we drag this to the left, it's gonna bump in to the green surface. The orange is gonna bump into the green. Well, the only way for it to get past that is it has to go up and over. 
It can't go through it. I mean, it could break off those little bumps, but often that's not possible. So instead what happens is it goes up and over it. So the two things that affect this is how big are these bumps? How much is this going to have to go up and over it? And how hard is this being pushed down? That's going to affect how hard it is to go up and over it. The harder it's being pushed down, the harder it is to go up and over it as we push this object sideways. Okay, so those are the two things that affect it. When we put those together in an equation, it looks like this. Okay, the force of friction, in other words, how hard it is to slide it past each other, or how much the friction resists it sliding past each other, is the value of the, the surfaces, a coefficient of friction given to that, uh, times how hard they're squeezed together. By the way, this is a ratio. It's a ratio of the two forces. That's how that surface is determined. And because it's a ratio, it doesn't have units. One of the very few things in physics that does not have units. Once again, because it's a ratio. Okay, so we got the normal force, which is how hard they're squeezed together. We have uh, the coefficient of friction, which is how bumpy they are. And together, that gives us the, co the uh, force of friction. Let's go on with the wizard level. We'll be using that equation here. Okay, to save room to use that equation completely, I'm going to write less of the other equations probably. Um, we'll see how this goes. So a rightward force is applied to a 20 kilogram object. Let's go ahead and just put that in real quick here. The mass is 20 kilograms, once again, because kilograms is the unit for mass. To accelerate it to the right, so we know our rightward force is going to be bigger. We can see that here anyways. Accelerate it to the right at 4 meters per second per second. Okay, and I always prefer writing meters per second squared. It's good to be used to both ways because different people write it differently. Okay, before we even read that last sentence, let's go ahead and calculate our net force because we can do that. And then we'll come back to calculating that. So our net force is the mass, which is 20 times the acceleration, which is four, and that gives us a net force of 80 newtons. Okay. Um, by the way, if you skip straight to the wizard level and you have any trouble figuring that type of thing out, I went through that in the uh, apprentice level and the master level, uh, how to calculate that. Then we can get the force of gravity, right? That's just 20 times 9.8. That gives us 196 newtons. And if the downward force is 196, that means the upward force is as well. But not only that, this normal force, which I keep saying is how hard the surfaces are squeezed together, and the surface is pushing up on the box, which is why we list it up here, but it's how hard they're squeezed together. That comes into our equation that we're going to use here, that the force of friction equals mu times the normal force. And I'm just going to use a capital N for normal force here. So friction then equals uh, mu, which we get in this next sentence. The coefficient of friction is 0.3. So 0.3 times the normal force, 196 newtons, gives us 0.3 times 196 gives us, oops, ooh, that was close, 58.8 uh, for our frictional force, newtons. And our coefficient of friction was 0.3. Remember, no units on that. Okay, so then we know that uh, the rightward force is 80 bigger than the leftward force. And our leftward force is 58.8. So we add on uh, 80 to that, and we get 138.8 newtons must be applied to this box in order to accelerate at 4 meters per second squared. All right, review those equations. Once again, we had the force of friction equation. We had the F equals MA equation here. And we had that these two forces have to subtract, because one is right and one is left, to give you this total force, and the bigger force had to be on this side. We also used weight equals mg to calculate gravity, and the fact that gravity is the same as the normal force because it's not accelerating up or down. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and you learned a little about how to use Newton's second law and the uh, 
coefficient of friction equation, the friction equation, to do some calculations. Click that like and subscribe button, and we'll catch you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beard Man.